Hello everyone. In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to transfer data from your local machine to the CARSI machines uh, so that you can process that data with your computations and also how you transfer your results from CARSI back to your local machine. First, I'm going to show you how to use some command line tools. Uh, these are available um, in the terminal on Macintosh. Um, some of them are available in Windows under PowerShell and they're all available if you're using Linux. So the first thing we'll need to do is find some data to copy. Um, I have a file here called x1a.zip. Uh, we can get the file size by asking for uh, long form information. And H gives it in human readable format. You can see this file is 112 megabytes large. Um, so the first tool we'll look at is called SCP. This is the counterpart of SSH. So SSH is secure shell. This is the secure copy um, command. And it's relatively simple to use. Uh, it guarantees security um, and it's gonna be suitable for a lot of simple tasks. The syntax for this command actually carries over to the next command we'll look at as well. So we're gonna type SCP, the name of our source file. So x1a.zip. And then the destination source is, is always of this format. It's going to be your username, so in my case, mfrit, at, uh, and I'm going to put in vdtna3, alliance.unm.edu. All right, so you log into um, cluster names like Wheeler or Xena or Taos or Gibbs. When you're transferring files, um, it's advisable to use this VDTNO3. This stands for Virtual Data Transfer Node. And the reason we'd like you to use um, this mechanism is that if you have long uh, programs running on any of the head nodes, then they get killed after 10 minutes or so. So if you have a very large file to transfer, and it's gonna take more than 10 minutes, um, you wanna use this Virtual Data Transfer Node instead of trying to use the uh, head nodes on our clusters. All right, so this is the path to use. Um, now, after the username and host name, as it comes a colon, and after the colon is gonna be the destination path. So the destination path, um, in this example, I'm gonna upload the data to my home directory. And a shortcut always for accessing your home directory is the tilde. So in our case, uh, I could either type users and prick to get to my home directory, or I can type tilde, which means exactly the same thing. And the slash after the tilde indicates a directory that I'm copying to, and hit enter. And the copy immediately has starts happening. Now, in your case, you may have to enter in your password before the copy starts. I have SSH keys set up, which I'll talk about in a different tutorial, um, so I don't get prompted for my password. And you can see that SCP gives you a nice progress bar, tells you how fast your upload is, what the estimated time arrival for the file is, and the percentage complete. All right, so we successfully uploaded the file. Let's log in to uh, Wheeler and take a look and make sure it's really there. All right, so I'm logging to Wheeler. Um, I can search for x51a.zip. And indeed, there it is. Uh, let's make sure it's the same size as before. Yeah, 112 megabytes. So I successfully uploaded that file to Wheeler. All right, let's exit back to my local machine. So that was SCP. SCP is available under Windows PowerShell and on Linux and Mac machines. The next tool I'm going to show you is called rsync. And rsync is a much more powerful tool for transferring data, um, but it requires a lot more thought to use correctly. I'll show you a couple of simple examples um, that work well, but in general for small, easy copy, just use SCP. Uh, if you want to transfer large files, um, then rsync is often better. So rsync can be much faster than SCP. And the reason is that SCP copies all the data from your source to the destination. It assumes that there's none of that data is already there. 
And it assumes you haven't already copied half the file, for example, up to the cluster. Rsync, though, is able to look at the source data, compare it to what may already exist at the destination, and only copy what it needs. So if you'd already copied up half the file with the previous rsync, um, it could be twice as fast to use rsync to complete the copy. Scopy would just copy everything again. Rsync will intelligently just copy what it needs. So let's take a look at an example of that. Um, so with rsync, and data dash p to get a progress bar. And then I'm going to give it the file name. And the syntax is exactly the same for the destination. It's going to be your username, the destination host. So again, the virtual data transfer node. And the path. I'm just going to put it in my home directory again. And you can see how fast that copy happened because it detected that the file already exists. It checked the data in that file to make sure it was consistent with the data that was here, and then realized it didn't really have to copy anything at all. I'm gonna change the destination name. And now we can see that rsync has to do the whole copy because there was no experiment 1A copy on, at the destination, so it, need, it needs to copy all of the data again. Okay, let's um, take a look at the relative speeds. So it uploaded on my home network connection at 2.11 megabits per second megabytes per second, sorry. Um, SCP copied at about 2.1. So really they're almost identical as far as speed when we're creating a new file, when the file doesn't already exist at the other end. But when rsync detected that the file was already, de already there, it had an effective upload rate of something like 330 uh, megabytes a second. Okay, so that's how you upload files to CARSI. Uh, now let's download a file from CARSI back to my local machine. Um, so we created this new file. We sort of renamed it when we transferred. We created a file called xpa1.copy.zip. Uh, and now we're going to copy that file or transfer that file back down to our local machine. And to do that, all we have to do is change around the arguments. So the source is now going to be username ddtnlt.alliance.unm.edu following for the path, my home directory, All right, this final dot here is just shorthand on most systems for the current directory. I think this is, applies to Mac, Linux, and Windows. So what this command says is secure copy the source, which is going to be on the CARSI systems in my home directory uh, and the new file we created. And the destination is just going to be wherever I run this command from. Okay, so we've now downloaded that file. Let's just make sure it's there. And there it is. Okay, and for rsync, it's gonna be almost identical. If I can go back to the same command in rsync, um, if I don't do a dash p, I won't get progress, I don't think. But again, rsync figured out that the file already exists, so it didn't really bother to copy it. It just took some time to verify that they really were the same files that were being transferred. These tools can be used to copy data not just over the network, but locally. So if you are logged into Wheeler, for example, and I wanted to um, copy 
my experiment file. Uh, perhaps to my scratch directory. I can do so um, using rsync. So in this case, the destination and the source are just local paths. Relo scratch is a directory that points to uh, my scratch, and I have the source zip file here. Let's go ahead and give a progress report this time. So this is really helpful when you're copying very large files um, to Scratch or around in Scratch. Sometimes file copies, even on fast file systems, can take um, you know, several minutes. And you can check the status of that by, uh, by using this dash P on rsync. If you just did a CP command to copy locally, you wouldn't get any sort of progress. Um, let's try this with SCP. And it works as well for SCP. So these commands are capable of copying to remote machines, or you can be used to copy data locally. OK, so I've shown you how to copy a single file. Now, in this case, it was a zip file. So it probably contains lots of files and directories. And that's one option if you want to, um, if you want to copy a, a whole directory, is just to compress it, to zip it up, and then copy it as one file. But um, rsync and SCP are both smarter than that. You can use them to copy whole directories. So let's create a quick directory, let's call it test, and let's rsync start.zip into our test directory. So we picked up three um, different zip files, uh, our two experiment zip files and an invoices and receipts file that was already in my directory. And you can see that it gave you progress for each of these files separately. If I just wanted to get a single, get that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and remove this invoices one. I don't want to copy that. All right, let's just copy up the contents of this test directory now. The way we're going to do that is with rsync dash r. In general, Linux commands, um, a dash r means recursive, and recursive means um, go into the subdirectories and the directories and apply this command all the way through. So um, if you want to apply things to a directory, normally a dash r is the right thing to do. So let's get our progress bar again. And this time, we're going to copy test, give our username, destination is before, And by the way, if um, you want to have a single progress report rather than a progress report per file, you can do this on most versions of rsync. Um, I'm not sure the ones on Macintosh at the moment support this. You can just specify progress too. And this will give you a single progress. Now it was so fast again that time because the files already existed. So let's try this. So make a copy of x1a zip or x2a zip. All right, so now we have a third file in our directory that we uploaded to Carsey. And I'm doing this just to show um, the power of, of rsync. So now if I upload this, you 
can see that it automatically figured out um, that some of the files were uploaded already and some of them weren't. So it started off very, very quickly. Now it's copying up the new file we created that didn't exist uh, at the destination. So if you had lots of experiments, lots of experimental files you were generating on your local machine and you wanted to keep on uploading new ones only, um, you could just use rsync in this manner. and It would just upload the new data. All right, so the upload um, completed. And you see instead of taking on average uh, 2.1 uh, megabytes per second, we achieved six, you know, three times the speed because there's only one file that really need to be uploaded. The other two are already there. Okay, so these command line tools um, are really useful, especially uh, at Carsey because you're normally on the command line um, doing your work, but there are lots of graphical user interfaces um, for file transfers uh, for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Um, in Linux, you can use uh, Nautilus. And I'll show you an example of that. So this is Nautilus. Nautilus is the file manager built into many distros of Linux. Um, it's similar to Explorer, File Explorer on Windows or Finder on Macintosh. And I can add a remote location here by clicking other locations, entering in the destination. So SFTP is the protocol we're gonna use, the secure file transfer protocol, the same protocol that SCP uses. I specify the destination. And then, um, the users and brick, because that's the destination of my home directory. And I hit connect, ask me to authenticate. And I can now see um, the files in my home directory, including the files we uploaded. And I can now drag and drop these files um, to my home. Uh, local system by just copying it into the right place. So here I can do a file transfer. And so that was very simple on, on Linux. I'll show you now how to do something similar um, on Windows using Cyberduck. And Cyberduck works on Macintosh or Windows and it allows you to just drag and drop files from your local machine on, onto the Carsey systems uh, using a graphical interface. Cyberduck is a Hello free um, file Contract transfer program that works just as well on Windows as on um, Macintosh. Local machines to Carsey machines and back so I'm gonna um, download Cyberduck here in this series, for Windows. And I hope you'll take advantage of those as well. Bye-bye. Downloads complete. I'm going to run the installation program. Cyberdux installed, so I can run it here from um, the Windows search. I'm going to open a connection using the SFTP protocol and I'm going to connect to Wheeler. So this is the um, same host name that you would have used to log into Wheeler via SSH. In fact, that's really what this compute, what this program is doing is SSHing to Wheeler and using the secure file transfer protocol to upload files. Enter in your username and password. can connect. The first time you connect to a machine, it's always going to ask you to confirm because it doesn't recognize this machine yet. I'm going to click always so it doesn't ask me this every time and allow. And now I can see uh, all the files that I have on the in my Wheeler home directory. Those of course will look different. And I'm going to go to my Wheeler Scratch shortcut. You'll all have a Wheeler Scratch shortcut that takes me to the scratch file system. So when I first connect, I'm connecting to the my home directory, 
which is a system that's backed up but relatively slow. The Scratch system, um, I can store a lot more data on here. It's much faster when I'm using it uh, for computations, but it's not backed up. So I'm going to create a new directory here. Let's call it Gaussian. Let's go to that Gaussian folder, which is empty right now. But I can drag and drop um, my output from Avogadro into that folder. All right, that's been uploaded. I'm going to use PowerShell to SSH into um, Wheeler so we can start just to verify that file is there. And I'm just going to verify the contents um, of this file to make sure it's what we expected. Uh, cat is just a program in Linux that shows the contents of, um, of text files. And there we are. I hope this uh, mini tutorial has been useful and you're able to transfer data from your local computer up to the Carsey machines and to transfer your results back to your local machine. Um, this is just one of a series of videos. I hope you'll take advantage of the others as well. Bye-bye.